Hello everybody, welcome to a new episode of Lads Discuss DC. We are discussing the next movie in this DC animated universe list, uh, Justice League Wars. Joined with me like last time is good old Saber King. <sighs> Fuck, kill me. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> um, and um, <laughs> with us as well is of course the uh, reactionist and also sprite animator Duo Dreamer. <laughs> Hi uh, guys, how are you doing? Um, I don't like the word reactionist. It's not a word. Well, in the, the, I'm being, dic I'm, in the dictionary of Bill, it is. Huh? In the dictionary of Bill, it is. Fix your vocabulary then. <laughs> Understandably, I've sold zero copies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, just as League Sorry, Wars. It's the teacher in me, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> So, Justice League War, which is what people consider to be the very first movie in this whole new animated universe. I didn't agree with it to an extent, but after rewatching it a few times this week, I can actually kind of see why they said it. Because if you were to watch this before Flashpoint, yeah, you're not really missing much. Like, uh, I, no, it's Flash. If you would have watched this after Flashpoint, because Flashpoint is kind of the jumping off point, and this is kind of. Yeah, but I have some things to kind of say about it because you wouldn't really think this is supposed to be right after Flashpoint. But um, well, there were a comic band that yeah. yeah, fair enough. But um, yeah, we're going to talk about this movie, and all three of us kind of share the same opinion that this was not a strong movie. No, uh, no, I share the opinion that this movie sucks and that. I have, and that we had to endure six more years, five more years of this shit. I mean, I wouldn't say, I'll definitely say after this movie, the quality started to increase. It did. It, 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 it did start, but I, I just think that it didn't have a good start. Especially there were some things that kind of irked me after I realized that all this was taking place after Flashpoint. So I didn't know until the Suicide Squad movie that I realized that all this was taking place after Flashpoint, and then there was some continuity errors I felt like, okay, what the hell? You know what I mean? But we'll get to that later. Yeah, so let's actually talk about the first scene, which I am playing right now. So, this movie opens up, which it turns out there's a mysterious Batman vigilante, but rather than going after criminals, he's going after just random civilians. And due to the yeah. fact... And, but because this is very unusual, the Green Lantern Corp... Uh, send in Hal Jordan to investigate it, which to me is a bit weird because I thought Green Lanterns were always summoned to deal with like big threats like Doomsday level threats or Tridon. Are you implying that parademons are not Well, before we get to that though, threat? before we get to that, you know, it's kind of building up to it. So, yeah. no one knew who this was. They just assumed it was Batman, like some sort of like rogue Batman. So, I just don't understand why the Green Lanterns would send Hal Jordan, especially considering the fact, like, like I said, Green Lanterns were uh, essentially space police that deal with, like, major threats, but, you know, it's a nitpick at best. Uh, so well, in... well, to be fair, a good amount of people ended up disappearing, so I would say that it is uh, appropriate to have a Green Lantern check it out, because it wasn't just me. You know, it was just it was a mass of people that's been disappearing, 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 and not even Batman could figure out what was going on. So of course you had Green Lantern to come in to check it out, you know? Yeah, and that actually moves on to the next point, because Green Lantern ends up running into Batman, and if you've not seen this movie before, this won't come as a shot to you, but um it's in this universe the Justice League is not formed yet. Right. Like, none of the, essentially the heroes have their own, as they put it, turfs. Uh, Superman's in charge of Metropolis, and Batman's in charge of Gotham, and Wonder Woman's in charge of DC, I think? Washington. Washington. Yeah, so, that's why I meant Washington, DC. So, it was a bit strange, because again, because I'm watching this, especially after the events of Flashpoint, which, by the way, at the end of that movie, Flash is talking to Batman. Yeah, in this movie, Batman just does not seem to care, which is a bit strange. And, and Flash doesn't even know who Batman is. Yeah, that's another no, thing. Like, Flash doesn't even know who he is. Like, mate, you went back in right. time. 
Yeah, because that's what I was saying. Like after watching the Suicide Squad and realized that it all it was all connected, and then I went back to watch Justice League War and also Flashpoint, and I was like, wait a minute. At the end of Flashpoint, they had a touching moment with Batman and Flash, but then all of a sudden, Flash said, "Oh, the Batman's real." Yeah, he's you know like I mean? a, a fanboy to him. It's like what? <laughs> So it, it just, I don't know. I don't know if it was the whole, like, um, trying to align the timeline where, like, eventually he's going to not remember the alternate timeline. I don't know if that's the excuse, but it just didn't make sense. And I did have a chance to watch the very last uh, movie. Uh, what was it? Um, just to leave Dark, Apocalypse. Apocalypse 4. And I'm, like, thinking... So how does how does Flash all of a sudden remember the Flashpoint? Yeah, so there's definitely some continuity stuff to yeah. do with this movie. And so Green Lantern and Batman team up, so it turns out this vigilante or rogue Batman is a parademon, a servant of Dark Side. I I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Um it's hard to do a <laughs> parademon's voice. <laughs> Uh, also, was that always a thing? Could parademons talk? I just assumed they were just like essentially space zombies or something like that. You know, I like, they can, I they can talk uh, to a point where they will pretty much say, "Hail Dark Side," or if they're gonna self-destruct or destroy themselves, they'll say in honor of Dark Side. So they do kind of talk, but more servient. I've always found that a bit weird. Like, I understand Dark Side's egotistical, but. My goodness, man. That's like having your Google just be like, hey, Google, praise me every time I enter. <laughs> uh, I don't understand. Uh, no, Google, don't actually listen to me. <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys heard that, but Google actually responded to me. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> hey, Google, go, hey, Google, cancel that order. <laughs> Sorry, I don't oh, shut up, Google. Stop talking to Google, Bill. <laughs> so anyway, so so just from getting the concept, when I first watched this movie, I assumed it was going to be like a Batman teaming up with Hal Jordan, trying to figure out this parademon, and then, you know, trying to find other Justice League members. But then it just randomly cuts to um, Cyborg's dad. I can't remember his name was. Uh, Silas. Yeah, who has one of the... Who has one of the mother boxes and he's trying to investigate it and then suddenly a good portion of this movie turns into a cyborg origin story but also a i wouldn't say shazam origin story but we get introduced to shazam uh yes the little bastard version yeah and i have to admit <laughs> this version of billy batson okay in the live action I movie he was kind of a well-written character because he's a he's a kid trying to look for his mum he has a reason to kind of be a bit of an ass to a lot of people because he just wants to find his mother. In this movie, though, he's kind of a dick for no reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the New 52 era, Bill. Welcome That's... to the New 52 era. Now, I understand some <laughs> characters were dicks, but Billy Batson was like a very nice kid. Like Even though he was rude, he was kind of humble in a way. He would try and help out people. He would even help his adoptive like, brother and sisters. It's just weird seeing him just act like oh, and then he steals Cyborg's um, jersey. It's jersey. like, yeah. Uh, to be to be fair though, if you're like awestruck with a certain someone like hero worship, you would want to get something of theirs to keep as a keepsake. So I, I would give him some leeway because, in in all honesty, I probably would have done the same thing. I, I uh, suppose, um, but I'm not no, that sort of person. I, I, Even as a kid, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I would have just been happy to meet my hero. Um, That's it. But this is something I do have to compliment the movie on. Um, also, I'm not sure whose Discord's going off. Uh, it's a bit distracting. It ain't me. Uh, it's probably me. God damn it, this is the second time now. <laughs> yeah, sorry, man. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know take pain. Yeah, I know. To be fair, if you ever hear me say you're fired, I don't actually fire you because I'll end up being like, "Hey, can you be on the next podcast?" Uh huh. Because you need me. Yeah. <laughs> I need those clickbaits. <laughs> really? You're more popular than me. You'll get me more clicks. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm that popular. <laughs> uh, popular than me. You're popular um, than me. So 
And when I'm looking at this movie, I say the thing that I'll say was the best part was Cyborg's origin story to an extent. And that was the uh, only origin story in the whole thing. Because I really did feel uh, for him, because you do kind of... And this is the thing, like, sometimes in movies, it's better to show than tell the audience. You can see a lot of, like... There's definitely some separation between, like, Cyborg's father and him. Like, Cyborg's a very good football player, and, you know, he wants his dad to be there more, just to... Not just to give him, like, inspiration, but just to, like, witness him win a game. And yet he's just not there because he's just distracted with work. And here's the thing, I don't hate his dad because he's investigating an alien object. Like, this is revolution. At the time of this movie came out, or at this time in the universe, there's never been, like, alien technology. The only thing that they got was Superman, really, or Green Lantern. Nothing. Even Aquaman wasn't even around at this point. Or no, at least he, wasn't. he wasn't known, so it's like, holy crap, this is an object from another world. We must dedicate a lot of time and get our best scientists to look at it. It was, um, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's like, come on, you can at least put some time for your son. Uh, it's, it's just kind of sad. I mean, I, I feel for Victor because, you know, you want the attention of your father, especially that your your mother passed away. So, who's the only one you can turn to for inspiration? It's your father, mm. you know? Um, so, I feel, I actually felt for Victor that he wanted that attention, you know? He wanted him to be proud. And what's worse, the father is saying that, oh, you're not going to make a future out of football, you know? And it's like, that's like... <laughs> well, given the fact he's playing in the middle of a stadium full of, like, loads of fans, that's kind of bullshit. Right. <laughs> well, that and a, col- and a college representative literally came up to him and was like, hey, you've got a bright future ahead of you. So, yeah, and he was getting a scholarship, too. He was going to get a scholarship. But I, the, part of it, I, I see where the father is coming from because, like, there are some scholarships, like a sports scholarship, athletic scholarship, sorry, where they'll keep you around as long as you're in there winning games, doing your best. But once you get injured, they start to pull away from you. And I guess the father was kind of concerned about that, hence why you say, like, you know, I got money. You know, I can pay your way to college. You don't need the scholarship. But my thing is, I understand that he, he might he might have been afraid of him getting hurt one day and then losing the scholarship. But at the same time, if someone's offering you scholarship, take it. Don't refuse it. Take it. It's free money. <laughs> exactly. I, yeah. wish I, had, I wish I had a scholarship. I mean, I had grants when I was going to college. I wish I had a scholarship where they paid my way through college, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it's not the fact that, it's not like Victor was stupid before he became Cyborg. No, he was actually quite a smart person. He knew about computers and stuff like that. Like, he was like a balanced nerd and jock. Perfectly right. balanced, as all things should be. God damn it. <laughs> you knew that was coming. <laughs> Uh, that's what, that's kind of my gripe with it, but at the same time, though, I do think Cyborg was a very sympathetic character. You could really feel for him, but at the same time, you could understand his father's perspective. Right. But then we switch from that, and then we just go to Wonder Woman suddenly, who's getting an angry mob sent after her, and it's like, what? Okay, who's the main character of this movie? Yeah. Everybody. Yeah, this... Go ahead, Rich, sorry. Oh, no, no, it's okay. Uh, everybody is the main character of this movie. That's why it's called Justice League. It's yeah, but war. the thing is, we're not really given... An... Okay, here's the thing that Flashpoint did good. When they introduced the Justice League, we got an idea of their personalities in less than, like, two minutes. You know, we got the idea of Batman's a detective, Superman was a humble hero, Wonder Woman's a very, uh, very warrior-esque. Right. But, but in this movie, it's like every ten minutes it's spent on each character, and it's just like... It's almost like filler in a way. It, it was um, film. Yeah. Well, it, well, it's not too far off from the original source material. Uh, well, that's true. Okay, listen. I'm one of those people that says, okay, it's good to adapt something, but that doesn't mean take everything, because sometimes the story might be a bit outdated. For instance, uh, it's a good well, thing I didn't... Imagine if they adapted yeah. Scrooge McDuck's very racial comics. Okay. Like... <laughs> There's just some things that's like, all right, let's relook at that and then just try and fix it up a bit. 
Well, see, the, the, the New 52 wasn't even outdated by the time this movie came out, because the New 52 had only been going for, like, three years in okay. real time. Okay, but my other gripe with it is that we don't really know this Justice League. Like, again, if you saw this book what and never... What do you need to know about them? Well, here's They're the thing. All, you know... like, if you went into this not thinking it was part of the Flashpoint movie, or you never saw Flashpoint, this was your first movie, they just do a terrible job introducing Wonder Woman, Superman... We'll talk about Superman when you get to that scene. Batman and Green Lantern. I mean, Green Lantern, we get an idea what character he is. Yeah, he's a douche. Oh, well, he's not a douche, he's just a smart-ass. Well, he's a lovable smart-ass. Yeah, exactly. He had some fun... Okay, here's the thing, Hal Jordan was, like, probably the funniest character in this movie. He had some general funny insults to the villains. Yeah. Um... And I will admit, this Wonder Woman scene was kind of funny, especially when she lassoes that guy and gets him to tell the truth, and he says, I dress up like Wonder Woman to make me feel powerful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought that was funny. I was like, all right, you want movie? You get one from me. You get one from me. Yeah, that, that was a funny moment, because he was like one of those, uh, like those types of protesters that are just there just because... I feel like he was just there because it was the cool thing to do. You know, what I mean, like this is the end thing. Let's all blame the 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 superheroes and stuff, for all the damages and stuff, which is an actual concern. Don't get me wrong, but the fact that he admit that, oh yeah, I dress up like one woman because it makes me feel powerful, and I'm like, yeah, you're just in there just because of the, you know, the atmosphere, not because it's mostly about your deep concern, even though it is a concern, but. There are people like that, though. Like on Twitter. Are... Yes. Yes. Hey, this person hates this thing. I want to join in. <laughs> uh, it... That's the internet for you. I, I would admit, I guess you could look at it. This is mocking those sort of people that just jump a bandwagon. Uh, yes. But of course, again, though, but then when you remember what movie you're watching, you're then kind of thinking to yourself, oh, wait a minute, this isn't a Wonder Woman movie. This is... And here's the thing as well. Um... We just see Wonder Woman with, like, um, going to the President's White House, and it's just like, wait, why is Wonder Woman here, and what is going on? <laughs> Simple. You ha would actually have to read the original source material to get why okay. she's there. D seriously, I hate the fact when movies do- Alright, I'll go into it at the end of this, when we talk about this movie. <laughs> um, okay. So let's move on to the next scene, though, which is the introduction to this version of Superman. I absolutely hate this version of Superman in this movie. Not in the, in the later movies, he got better, but this movie, this introduction to Superman was awful. Just like his comic book New 52 counterpart. Yeah, do you know what? I'll agree with Richard on that. I did actually read some of the New 52 Superman. They were dreadful. So in the, how, so in the comic book, how did they introduce uh, Superman? Because I never read the New 52. Like, um, how did... Richard's How read was more of them than me, so he'll explain. Yeah, that's what I was asking Rich. Oh. <laughs> pretty much, uh, pretty much exactly how this movie is depicted him. That's it? Dick. No, no, like, say, oh, I'm from Krypton and Rainbow. Oh, yeah, no, we, yeah, we get that stuff, but, you know, he's an edge lord. He's an edge lord, and he's a dick. That's and, it. And that's the thing I really hate to say, because his costume, his modern costume in this looks pretty good. Um, I remember when people were going uh... crazy about the neck thing. That never bored me too much. At least he doesn't look like he's wearing his underwear on the outside. A lot of hey, people do that. That hey, that's an iconic look. I don't, I, at I the like... same time, yeah, it is iconic. At the same time, though, we do have to see Clark Kent's bulge. Which, to be fair uh, though, at least I see why Lois Lane yeah. uh, likes this man. Oh my god! <laughs> I I do want to taste a bit of that Clark Kent. <laughs> You're just jealous. Yeah, I guess being near the sun for so long gave him uh, an increase down there. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> um, it, it's kind of weird though, like, Alf Superman has always been that person. He's a humble hero, he's very cheerful, he's helpful. I mean, this is a superhero who had tea party with a dying little girl, like, holy hell, that is so sweet. He. He helps people with suicide, like, he doesn't just stop them from falling by just grabbing them just as they jump. No, he stays with them until v nightfall and speaks to them. He helps them. Like, even, well, he, even gets, boy. he even gets cats out of trees, like, come on. Yeah. But in this movie, it's like they tried to turn him into a Ragnar Blood Edge. Well, no, again, that's, they were, they were adapting and they were pretty much, 
uh, translating what he was in the books. So in that regard, they did a good job. Well, of reminding me why I hate the books. <laughs> but here's the thing as well, like, if this is how the comics actually did, well, that's what they did do, it's not a good interpretation of Superman. Listen, kids even this day love Superman. Like, even though he may not be as popular as, like, Goku, Batman, or Iron Man anymore, he is still an iconic comic book hero. People do love this man. Whenever I'm in work, I see people with Superman shirts. But in this movie, he just feels like he's trying to be Batman, essentially. Even in this fight scene with Green Lantern vs. Batman, which, okay, to be credible, the animators did a fantastic job. All right, I'm not yeah. going to sugarcoat it. The fight was brilliant. It was, it was well choreographed. Um, I love how they were kind of feeding off each other on how they can counter their moves and their equipment and everything. And I like how Superman also kind of like anticipate what Batman was going to do. But at the same time, Batman is always a few steps ahead of Superman. And you kind of see that in the fight. And of course, with Green Lantern, like, he uses, tried to use brute force, and of course, that doesn't work on Superman. But other than that, that whole sequence was very well done, in my opinion. Even and when Green Lantern... Good... Sorry, and sorry, Rick. Only good... no, no, it's okay. And it's the only good sequence you're going to get out of this movie. I disagree. There are some good fights later on. Well, well, we'll get to those in a sec, but let's talk about the bit where Batman and Superman figure each other out. Well, Batman already figured out who Clark Kent was. Because, of course, he did. Because um, he's Batman! Yeah. Um, yep. And with Superman, it was kind of interesting how he used his X-ray vision and saw yeah, it was Bruce exactly. Wayne. That was pretty. That was a comedic moment. How Jordan being like, who's Bruce Wayne? And I thought, okay, that's kind of funny, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Uh, oh. That's not funny. That's just stupid. Because how the hell does Hal Jordan not know who Bruce? He's been in is? space, man. Yeah, he but he's on he... Earth before he went in space, though. Well, you got to think. He knew probably who Thomas Wayne was, but then, oh wait, no. I guess no. Hal. When... No, Hal and Bruce were the same age when they were kids. Okay, do well, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I guess there's some continuity bullshit there as well. Exactly. Uh... So, but then, after this scene, we are introduced to the main villain of this movie, Dun Dun Dun, Darkseid. And he sucks. I have a bit of a mixed bags about this, uh, but I'll let you guys, I've talked a bit first for a lot of the scenes, so how about you guys go first about Darkseid in this movie? You can, you can go first, Wretch. Okay. He's voiced by Tony Todd, which is awesome, but his design is stupid, and he's pretty much just... I want to rule the world. I I just want to do things because I'm evil. Ooh, so like that's it. I, like, I can't yeah. disagree with that. <laughs> it's like this is this is just simple cartoony, one-dimensional villainy, villain villain three, and I I just I don't like it. Uh, especially since he. He comes back at the end of this at the end of this universe, and even then, he's somewhat better in his last entry than he is here. Because here, he just shows up. Why is he showing up? Simple, because he wants to rule the Earth and he wants to do whatever the hell he wants to do. That's it. Like, uh, there's nothing that makes him charming. There's nothing that makes him endearing. He's just here because. He needs to be the justice. The reason the Justice League gets together. So mm. pretty much, he was a plot device. Exactly. Oof, yeah, and I, I'll, I'll let Duo say his piece, and then I'll say my issue with this. Well, the, to me, when I think of Dark Side, I always hear his end game. What does he want? You know, not just doing it just for the sake of. I just want to conquer the world. That's it. He always had a reason, and we didn't really get that reason why he wants to take over Earth. You know what I mean? We didn't really get that reason. So we just know that he's bad. He's a bad guy because his minions coming in, he's kidnapping um, people, trying to change them into the uh, parademons as well, and just coming in wreaking havoc and destruction. That's pretty much it. Like, like what Richard's saying is like he's he's there just to conquer the world. That's all. But 
every person that wants to conquer war always have an end game as to why, and he didn't really explain why. And the design with with of Dark Side, I did not mind the design because, you know, I kind of like certain designs, you know, kind of different from the norm, just to see a, a different take on it. But uh, in terms of his character, I have to agree with Richard. It was just very one-dimensional. And I think, like, the movie was just capitalizing on the fact that, well, everyone knows who Darkseid is. He is the big bad. That's it. You know? And it's like you said, Billy, sometimes if someone just watched this movie for the first time, never knew anything about Darkseid or anything like that, I think it's a poor introduction to him in this movie. Hmm. Uh, is that your final take on that? Is this yeah. A... Okay, and I kind of agree with you both on this. I never thought in my life I'd ever agree with Richard. <laughs> um, Feels good. Uh, this is coming from two people who both argued about The Last of Us Part 2 <laughs> for <laughs> ages. <laughs> Don't mention that to you, my uh, That's a conversation for another day. Um, so... I'm going into this thinking to myself, okay, I've been a Dark Side fan since the Justice League show. His introduction into the very first episode of Justice League, I mean, he was introduced in the Superman show before it, but since I didn't grow up with that, and I grew up with the Justice League, he was such a menacing villain. Like, he didn't have to speak out loud to be like, yes, I am an evil villain, fear me. He would keep a calm posture, he would keep his arms behind his back, and he would show you why you should fear Darks and why he's worshipped. Not not worshipped because they respect him, but because they fear him. Fear, yes. And even, his, even his line in the t kids' TV show when he was resurrected, as... I will thank you with a merciful death and just incinerate him. It's like, whoa, that that's him showing mercy. <laughs> yeah, no, and even in the Superman animated series, like one thing that they did that really fleshed him out. So like, why do his followers follow him? Oh, it's not because they're enslaved. It's because they literally worship him and they believe that he is right. And he literally says, I am many things, Jello, but here, I am God. Even like, when Superman that, beat the ever-living crap out of him and said, you are free, people, everyone just help Darkseid. It's like, whoa. <laughs> and, yeah. and again, some of it was with respect, but at the same time, some of them didn't want to go up against Darkseid. It's like, oh, he might defeat him now, but what if he comes back? No, we have to help him. <laughs> and, yeah. And that's the thing as well. Like, Technically, this version of Darkseid is not really Darkseid. If, for those who don't know, the physical form of Darkseid is not him. That's just an avatar of his. That's his Sims character. <laughs> well, spoiler alert, this is... Well, spoiler alert, true Darkseid is never referenced or shown in this universe. So, Which, this is Darkseid. Mm, this isn't an avatar. This is Darkseid. In uh, my opinion, though, I think there was another movie, uh, I think, before this... It was Batman and Superman. Um, I forgot the subtitle for it. Not Public uh, Enemy. Yeah, Apocalypse. Uh, oh. Apocalypse something. Yeah. Was, was that the one where they fought an army of dark uh, doomsdays? Yes. And yes. That's the and one now, where Batman that's when we first see side. Supergirl. Mm hmm. And that dark side was properly flushed out. In, in one was, movie. <laughs> in one movie. In one movie. He was properly flushed out in this one. And he felt intimidating in it. He was intimidating. You found out the reason why he's doing it. You know what I mean? Why he's trying to kidnap um, Supergirl. And then at the, like at the end battle, you know, where he said, like, well, I promised not to hurt her, but I didn't say I promised not to hurt you, Superman. You know, that's like, that's dark side right there. He found a loophole. That's dark side right there. But with he, this one, he would be amazing with tax evasions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you yes. see, I said I would pay the bank. I didn't say I'd pay you. Bzzz. Just incinerates the landlord. Omega being yeah. right here. <laughs> uh, um, None of that is here, and he's and he shows up in this universe two more times, and he still isn't remotely even fleshed out. Um, no, yeah. 
but we'll talk about the movie where we believe it was a bit more fleshed out when we get to it eventually. We got a lot of movies to cover before we get to that, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but to wrap up my point about him, I, I was looking at this dark side, and I didn't look at dark side. And to be honest, I felt like this guy felt more like Steppenwolf in a way. Not the Justice League live action one, I meant like the actual comic version of Steppenlord. Or Steppenwolf, sorry. Okay. Like, he, um, he comes in confused. with a small Not portion. Who's Steppenwolf? The son of Darkseid. Oh, okay. Well, uh, no, he's not the son of Darkseid. He's one of his generals. Okay, well, yeah, they, some people always call him the son of Darkseid. I just go with that. No, no, he's he's one of his generals. Darkseid only has two sons, and Steppenwolf ain't one of them. Well, regardless, though, um, uh, I guess I should stop listening. And to do, I was Discord server for that. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? That's where I, that's why I heard uh, Steppenwolf was his son on your server. <laughs> oh, whoever lied about that kicked them right now, like right this second. <laughs> Look through some old messages where I might have seen that. <laughs> um, but yeah, this guy, I felt like they. Here's the thing as well: Darkseid doesn't even attack with his full army; it's just parademons. He doesn't bring his ships in, doesn't bring in his, like, massive army. He literally brings in the first wave, which that's what makes me think. Maybe this guy should have been Steppenwolf instead. Because just like in a lot of the adaptations, Steppenwolf comes in with a small army at first, and then he summons the large-scale army. Well, you asked for them to make a change, and here it is. They <laughs> use Darkseid instead of Steppenwolf. Yeah, so... And I also have a problem with revealing the big back. Like, imagine if this was Avengers, and they introduced Thanos in the first movie. That just it just make him not seem that powerful. It's like the build up to Thanos was brilliant. Yeah. Uh, but after we get introduced to the main villain of this story, we go back to Superman, Green Lantern, and uh, Batman. Batman. Yeah, I can't believe I forgot Batman. And they're investigating the Mother Box, and then it starts acting a bit weird. And then immediately after that, we cut to Cyborg and his father again. Yeah, that seems pretty brief, people. Like, it constantly keeps cutting back to four to Batman and Superman and Green Lantern. Then it cuts to Cyborg. It's like, oh my god, can you just make up your mind? <laughs> and, of course, Cyborg Victor getting so angry at his father, he decides to grab the mother box, which the abridged version like happily takes the mix saying oh my goodness this is a stupid idea why'd i do this <laughs> but in this one he just grabs it and then he's surprised like oh my god this dangerous device i don't know about is being weird <laughs> <sighs> so, it's so weird and then it turns out that these mother boxes were indeed portals that summoned dark sides parademons like swarms of them yeah now this is another point i have to give credit to this movie and again, this has to do with Cyborg. How, when they show Victor's body after the portal, holy crap, like... Oh, yeah. He looked so burnt. Like, here's the thing. Even in the original comics and in New 52, it didn't look that bad. It looked like he just had a few burns and that was it. No, in this movie, he looks fucked up. Like, there was like, yeah. you, you should not be alive from that. You've lost an arm. 90% of your body is gone. Like, you are just a... You are just... A jerk chicken at this point. <laughs> like he's like he's a human kebab. <laughs> yeah. Um and like the whole process of how he became cyborg just looks so painful too. Like all these needles like just in going into his face, not just his body, but his face too. It's just it's, like it's so damn. graphic. Like, yeah. Like and you and you hear him screaming and agonizing pain. By the way. Do you want another prop? The voice actors for this movie were amazing. Like, even though they had to read some bad lines, they they did give it their all. Yeah. Disagree. All of them were terrible. Oh, Ow! God, are you serious? I get it, Richard. You hate this movie, but stop trying to hate everything about it. <laughs> oh, no, I do hate everything about it. <laughs> oh, well, even the cyborg scenes... Especially the cyborg. What? I don't, rem uh, I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember asking for a cyborg 
origin in my Justice League origin. So. Okay, do you want, fair enough, that's, that is a problem with this movie. It does juggle so many stories at once. Yes. This is, uh, but, this is what you signed up for when you asked in me a to way, do this. In a way, though, <laughs> Cyborg's transformation does come into play in the final act of the movie, so his was not complete filler. Yay. Ooh. Um... So obviously, uh, Richard, do you want to give your full thoughts on this scene? Meh. <laughs> it was fine, I guess. It was well animated, I guess. Well, somewhat decently well acted, but um, just them trying to be PG-13. It's like, ooh, look at us! We're PG-13! We're going to show you graphic details of Cyborg getting burned. It's like, ooh, yeah, look at that. Feel that. Actually, you're, surprisingly enough, on the DVD version I got, it's rated 12. Which is PG-13 for us. Yeah, I know, but I'm just thinking to myself, like, hold on, how's it the first movie was 18, and this one, which literally shows Victor bloody dead, near death, and his limbs ripped off, and it's only like, eh, kids will be fine with that. <laughs> because the rating system, it can be stupid sometimes. Oh, I suppose that's true. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's it. I'm, I'm good. Um, Dude, do you want to give your final thoughts on the whole cyborg transformation? Um, seeing that um, you rarely see origin stories of cyborg in other sources when it comes to the you know, media, like, you know, movies and cartoons and stuff like that, I thought it was an interesting take. In my opinion, I never thought about, you know, I never seen, actually seen his origin story before. So to me, I was fascinated about how he became Cyborg in this one. So, and this is just coming from a person that rarely sees his origin stories from, like, say, Teen Titans, the show, or the Justice League, or any other movie from the DC Universe, you know? So I thought it was a... Um, Fascinating in how Cyborg became Cyborg. Hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I do think that this is where the movie shines a lot uh, with Cyborg's origin because we get introduced to his character, we get introduced to his problems with his father, and then we get to the bit where he becomes the hero. Similar to like Iron Man, Captain America, and so many other movies. Right. So I definitely. F they definitely put a lot of work into Cyborg's story. But now, the next scene, we saw all that graphic and horrifying stuff, and then the next scene is Wonder Woman eating ice cream with a little girl. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, okay, we're gonna see this. it's we're adorable. Gonna get used to this scene, by the way. It's gonna be in a lot of Wonder Woman shit coming up. Okay, to be fair, in the original comics and stuff like that, she was a fan of ice cream. But writers, you do not show such a graphic scene like that and then just next to me, it's like, ooh, ice cream, rainbows, and all that jolly. It's like, no, that just, that's such a bad transition. Like, imagine if Avengers Endgame, we see Hawkeye crying over his family because they've disappeared, and then suddenly we just cut to Iron Man just throwing flowers around everywhere. It's just... Oh, yeah, we, it's, it's bad. Everything about this movie's bad. Now you're starting <laughs> to catch on. I'm starting to think we should change your name to Edge King. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. I can't wait till we get to the next movie because you'll you'll be a bit more positive. I hope. <laughs> oh, I will. I'll be a thousand times more positive. It, I, I can yeah, the next one's a Batman movie, right? I don't want to say yeah. anything just yet, but I could. I just want to hear Doris' reaction when I do announce we are going to talk about this movie. Uh, but anyway, right. so okay, now this scene here. Okay, I get the fact this is a Justice League movie, so they need to introduce all these heroes. But then, in this scene here, it keeps cutting back to Cyborg transforming, and then it cuts to Wonder Woman eating ice cream. It's like, come on, stop, this is not... <laughs> Who was the editor for this movie? Because he did not do a good job. It's, it's sort of like that one scene in Bambi, where Bambi's mother gets killed, and then all of a sudden it goes right into, like, springtime. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen Bambi. Um, do you oh, get that oh, reference, yeah. Uh, Rich? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Bambi 2 is underrated. Uh, 
<laughs> talking about that instead of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to tell you about it. this. Is, Richard being miserable while we talk about this movie is entertaining for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Glad I can entertain you. Oh, I'm gonna kill you. Shut up. <laughs> Do you know what? My audio was actually, or oh, your audio was actually cutting up a bit, a bit there, so you were getting so angry, you were crashing my OBS. <laughs> Good. Don't worry, the, the, the footage is fine, it's gonna be alright. Alright. Uh, Just get on with it. Now back to the show. Um, I, I felt like how it, it was slowly forming into um, Cyborg rather than just like quickly, oh, it looks like Cyborg. I like how it was like slowly turning, forming into what we know how Cyborg looks. As for the fight, like he was just, I, it, was, he, it was pretty much his body was on autopilot. So yeah, it was kind of, it made control. sense. It made sense that you know, in the fight that he started to learn his new abilities and stuff, even though that uh, before he can actually take full control, you know, his whole body was on autopilot, you know? So I thought it, it made sense from a storyline sense, rather than all of a sudden he knows how to use it, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was it was really cool to see, and the anime is, again, did a good job with the fight choreography in this site. You could tell, like, Victor is trying his best to fight off the demons, but at the same time, he's not in full control of the robotic body, and he's still trying to adjust to it. And I also like the fact, like, when he, the more damaged he got, the more he started to form into his classic design. And uh, then we cut to Billy Batson returning home, and then uh, this scene is literally one minute and 40 minutes long. No, one minute and <laughs> One minute and 40 seconds long. And it literally is just him complaining to his sister and brother. Then a parademon comes up and he just screams Shazam. And it's just like, oh, Shazam's in the movie now. It's like, and then he just flies off. It's like, what? <laughs> like, nothing of value was learned. Like, okay, cool. Shazam's in this movie. But what does he contribute? Absolutely <laughs> nothing. In fact, except, yeah, even in the last act of this movie, he gets his ass kicked. <laughs> It just felt so random. <laughs> Again, I get mm -hmm. it. Almost as strong as Superman, too. But at the same time, he is a kid. So... I mean, it I makes sense to get his butt kicked. Okay, I get it. This is the Justice League movie. You got to introduce the main, like, groove that formed in the new 52, which was Flash, Green Lantern, Shazam, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, etc. And Cyborg. It, it just felt just so random, though. And, uh, oh, and then we cut to Wonder Woman and Superman saving the president. And it's just like, okay, fair enough, parademons are attacking him, and understandably Superman went off to go help the president because he's in a goddamn American. America! Fuck yeah! <laughs> I'll just love to see that. Superman comes in. America! Fuck yeah! Come in to steal your wind, Diana! <laughs> <laughs> like that is, that is so true though isn't it Superman literally just like <laughs> stole Wonder Woman's yeah. like thunder <laughs> no and and then it and then it forced shadows to them getting together yay yeah that was also something that was a bit random is that Wonder Woman and Superman and this are a couple but no. again we were never shown this it was just oh yeah we're a couple <laughs> Well, no, they, they become a couple by the end of this movie. Oh, okay then. I thought they were already a couple. No. It didn't really matter, because in the next movie or the movie after this, they broke up. No, it was actually the... Uh, it was actually the fifth Death movie Superman? after... I don't know. 
Yeah, that yeah, that was many many movies down the line. So they're going to be a couple for a while. Oh wow, really? I didn't think it was that long. <laughs> yep. Um, do I didn't touch on this before. I have to admit, Wonder Woman's design. I'm not too much a it's fan shit. of it, but it does look more like a warrior outfit than in her uh, typical not American. even close. It looks like an Amazon outfit. No, it literally looks like shit. Okay, you're using the term literally wrong. You're pretty much saying she's actually wearing shit on her. <laughs> exactly. I think that's the point. I think that's the point of what he's trying to no, say. No, that's you're using literally wrong. <laughs> I don't mean that's to be a grammar man. Nazi, but... <laughs> Oh yeah, no, yeah, uh, I yeah, I guess you would know all about that, Mister. I sold zero books of my copy of Bill's vocabulary. Bill's vocabulary coming to Amazon never, because they keep refusing it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Gee, I wonder why. Because <laughs> it's too good. It's too good. <laughs> sure. Now, okay, but then the scene we get before Darkseid arrives is that we see how Darkseid makes his power demons, and again, similar to Cyborg's transformation, it's pretty good. It's very graphic to see how these power demons yeah. are made. No, but, none of this is interesting, and none of this is worth my time. Oh my god! Next. Okay, it I is. I think you forgot to about Flash. Um. Oh yeah, oh, so yeah. for those that don't know, Flash came in at the last second, ironically, <laughs> to stop Cy... No, he was introduced later on. He was, the, he was the guy who got the burritos and called Silas Stone. Okay, fair and enough. And he went to go help him. Jeez, Billy, come on. <laughs> There's a lot to remember in this movie, alright? <laughs> I'm just trying to skip forward to the main scenes, you know. The ones people look yeah, on YouTube yeah. for. But yes, The Flash is also in this movie, he does help out Cyborg, um, Billy Batson also joins Cyborg and The Flash, again just out of the blue. And then we essentially do get the movie we all came for, Parademon start invading Metropolis, and it is a, it's a pretty big army, and Green Lantern and Batman are trying to hold them off, and then the rest of the Justice League come in. Now, again, as Rich is going to hear me saying this again, the fights with Green Lantern when he uses his ring are very are very much Hal Jordan. He's very unethical, like he doesn't summon just typical stuff, he summons like trains, safes, and stuff like that to defeat enemies, which I think is, is such Hal Jordan. No, I'll give you that one. Like, because Green Lanterns, even the very serious ones, don't play around when they do their powers. No, they will summon serious stuff like weapons, shields. No, Green Lantern's like, nah, choo-choo, motherfuckers! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or freaking summon boxing gloves. It's like, come on, man. That is, that is brilliant. Hey, hey, he is from Earth, so of course he's going to use his imagination with that ring. So, um, But as they're fighting, the Flash comes in and he acts like a brown nose to Batman, which this is the part we were going to talk about. How Flash doesn't seem to recognize Batman, despite the fact... They spoke to each other before the end of the previous movie, and this is meant to take place during that same universe. Right. This is actually this is this is basically timelines been rebooted. He has no memory of the previous timeline, so that is why all of these characters are just now meeting for the first time. Now when I would agree with. Memories, yeah, I would agree with you. his memories but... back at the end of this universe when it's about to die. That just seems like, why though? Why not just have it so he does have a memory? Why couldn't they just have it so he does remember, but he doesn't want to freak everyone out, so because he just pretends... there was no... Well, simple, because this universe was only three years in, in, in comic time, and they hadn't fi and they haven't, they hadn't established exactly how everybody just forgot about Flashpoint until a couple years later. And spoiler alert, no, Dr. Manhattan, unfortunately, does not show up in this and reveals, it was I who did, who created this new universe. Yeah. Um, that was weird. And then Wonder Woman and Superman show up, Hal tries to hit on Wonder Woman, and Superman's just like, bitch, no, she's mine. Uh... Wait, okay, I have to admit, the face he gives Hal is freaking hilarious. That is such a memeable face. <laughs> 
Nothing about this movie is memeable. Oh my god, shut up, Emo. Go to your room. Listen to your heavy rock music. <laughs> oh, dude. Hey, 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 hey. Love the rock. Make me an Emo. Oh, I'm joking, I know, but... I, I know, yeah. Rich, you really don't like this movie, which... I kind of get it. <laughs> it. It was definitely not as I good don't... as Flashpoint. It's kind of weak to come from that movie onto this one. Yeah, but the thing is, you wouldn't know if it was part of the whole series, though, because of all the continuity errors. Yeah, there's quite a lot of it in this portion of the fight. But um, now we're moving on to the bit which people consider to, which I'm a bit surprised by, people consider this section to be the best part of the movie. Uh, Cyborg comes in and he reveals that he can speak to the technology and that someone is coming and that's when the big man himself, dun dun dun, dark side appears. Oh, uh, well, first I have to get for a YouTube ad. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> so a portal opens up and dark side enters the room. Well, room. <laughs> he enters the planet and the fight that ensues here is pretty cool. It's terrible. It's cool. That's only because you're taking what little cool there is in this movie. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying, trying to give, to give it this, leeway. I'm trying to give this movie some credit, man. <laughs> but no, no, this, there, no, this movie doesn't deserve any credit. Okay, no, this movie had some pretty good moments. Like, for instance, Superman and Flash trying to outrun uh, Darkseid and Mega, Mega Beams. That, that was really cool. That oh, was cool. Oh, wow. How Superman George and Flash outrunning dark sides omega beams i've never seen that before okay fair enough but also how jordan <laughs> like trying to match dark side but then he finds out that this threat is not exactly what he's used to because at this point especially if you've read the comics how jordan's fought against some pretty powerful beams. so then he's introduced to dark side and he straight up just one punches him and breaks his arm it's like whoa ah good to know that Good to know that the Green Lantern Corps would amounted to absolutely nothing in this movie. Thanks a lot, Guardians. But that's the thing, though. Dark Side's meant to be like this imposing threat, and he did prove it by defeating a Green Lantern. Because at this point, no one's really defeated a Green Lantern that easily. Well, uh, nobody has defeated a Green Lantern in this universe that easily. That's, so that's I what I mean. Got if we actually got some time to explore this universe, then maybe I would have given a shit. Uh, I I get it. It's kind of hard to fit a large comic book story into like a one hour and a half movie. Uh, oh, and also we got exactly. Bat we got Batman versus like a corrupted Superman, which was a really cool scene. We got to see uh... more of, we got to see more of Batman's respect for Superman, which this I'll give this film credit. They did that respect? really well. Well, yeah, because he's trying to tell Superman the world needs Clark. He just. Barely knows who he is. No, How he the knows fuck who does Superman. He, know whether... he knows no, who no, Superman no. is, and they know that he's meant to appeal to that good side of humanity. Well, well, maybe in the maybe the Superman you're talking about is in the other animated films because I don't see that Superman here. I just see a big dumbass. I mean, Ouch. yeah, they they did kind of like just turn him into a an edge lord. Eh? A Ragnar Blood Edge. Exactly. Spoiler alert, this isn't the last time these two fight, so get ready for that whenever we get to that, I guess. Well, luckily Superman does improve after this movie a little bit. Barely. And, uh, other things I didn't like, I also like the fact Darkseid was putting little effort when he was destroying Metropolis. Like, he's literally got his arms behind his back, and he's not even walking, he's just floating, just letting his minions do all the hard work. Like, that is typical Darkseid. And we do get a really epic fight between the Justice League and Darkseid. There's, like, he's clearly shown why he's such a big threat and why the Justice League need to work together. Um, we tried hitting him hard on our own. Didn't work. We need to hit him hard on our own. Together. Brilliant plan. Well, again, though, yeah, because <laughs> all their power... That to, on their own, they're all really powerful. That's the thing about Justice League. They're really powerful on their own, but there are those threats that would require a full team. And it's not just they're just hitting him. No, they're trying to combine like each of their powers to 
do lasting damage on him. Even my my favorite bit, Wonder Woman fucking stabbing out Dark Side's eyes. Like holy Ooh, crap, yeah. that that was so cool. I was like, yes, that is my Wonder Woman. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and, Spoiler and he, alert, that wound is going to heal up uh, good as new, and he'll have both of his eyes again. Well, I mean, yeah, but it's also the fact he's still fighting while he's blinded. Like, holy hell, he's... Badass. I, I would say that is kind of badass. Both eyes getting blinded and he's still fighting, that's badass. <laughs> he's like that knight from, like, Monty Python. Like, but your eyes are gone. It's but a scratch. It's both of your arms are gone. The knight never got blinded. No, uh, I know he didn't. I'm just saying, like, this is a dark... You ruined the joke! It's what I do. <laughs> what the heck is that? Hello? Billy? Bill? Billy? Uh-oh. I think his thing's um, out of whack. I think so. You might have to, uh, Bill, you might have to, um, reset your thing. Technical difficulty for two minutes. I have to cut out two minutes of Bill being a squirrel and trying to fix his audio. Now I can just cut to the part where they get back to it, but I can't. The reason you guys see filler on these podcasts most of the time I have to cut something is to keep my timestamps better so that that way I don't get completely lost and I can finish editing on time. So fuck it, here's something. <laughs> Hello and today welcome to Let's Go Step Battle. I'm Bill. I'm Jaru. I'm Richard. And today we're discussing Beerus vs. Sailor Galaxy and a few other Death Battle things. Let's start off with Jaru. What did you think what did you think of this episode? I hated it. The end. That's all I gotta say. I hated it. Richard, what do you think? Well I hate all the research and boring parts, but I enjoyed the animation a lot. So there was that. I thought Bill, what about you? I thought the episode as a whole was great. Now we'll see one more next time. Todoroki vs. Zuko. Who do you guys got? Well in my review, I said that Zuko was going to win. Richard, you are high. I clearly think Todoroki's gonna win. You know what? I want Jaru. Uh Todoroki's gonna win. Hooray, me and Bill actually agree on something. Let's move on to another topic that hopefully we agree on. Well, actually, I was hoping to talk about the live action when it's over. And nope, I'm out. I'm gonna go roast IGN some more. Have fun, boys. Wait, what? <sighs> Bell, you know he's just gonna fight Red Hood and we're gonna hate it, right? Probably. As I was saying, like, it was really cool seeing, like, Darkseid just. Despite the fact he was getting stabbed, he was getting obliterated, his armor was damaged, yet he's still fighting. Like, his army's getting defeated, they all retreat into the- well, they get sucked away. And he, Thanks, Cyborg. Yeah, and despite the fact that he's getting sucked in as well, he's still trying to single-handedly fight this Justice League, despite the fact he is literally right at the edge of the portal. And I was on edge, like, come on guys, knock him in there, knock him in there. <laughs> like, it does have that moment where you're just screaming for the heroes to just smack him in now. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And honestly, Superman's line uh, to Darkseid, when Darkseid's like, I am Darkseid, I don't care, boosh! <laughs> like, that final bit... Clearly an epic line. For all ages. <laughs> um, so, what did you guys think of this final fight between Darkseid and the Justice League? I personally thought it was pretty cool. It's just a shame we had to sit through a bit of monotony until we got to it. What a mediocre way to end this mediocre film. Really? Ouch. Uh, do, you, do it before you go. Richard, what do you hate about this final fight? everything well explain that everything <sighs> if I'm lost. well i mean why else would you be on this and... podcast <laughs> fair enough 
animation was 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 fine. It was very very well storyboarded on paper. It would have been nice. It would have been good, but with these models, I really was very less invested because all of these model sheets suck. They're not as well detailed, and to be honest, they're just simplistic. So it was literally just two simplistic models or a lot of simplistic models being drawn to fight this simplistic model. Nothing felt like it had even remotely any weight. And the fact that, oh, he was blinded, he got his armor, trying to show us that, oh, Darkseid, the villain that we hyped up throughout this whole movie, is easily defeated and easily taken out like a chump. It's like, wow. But that's kind of, um, that's kind of disrespecting the Justice League members, because the fact that Darkseid was so powerful to knock out a lot of them to the point they had to combine their efforts was pretty wicked. Yeah, on paper it was, but an execution with finished animation, finished colors, and voice acting, I was not impressed. And I, quite frankly, have seen better, well-choreographed, better stakes, and fights that have much more impacts. It was a good try, you know, they, they did their best, but um, it was just a mediocre fight to end off this mediocre film, and thank god it's almost over. <laughs> That's the only good thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 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 Duo, do you want to share your thoughts on this fantastic, well, okay, not fantastic, it was, it was a good fight, but what do you think of it? Um, it was a good fight, but there were very little um, memorable moments in this set fight. Like, the only things I would remember that, like, spoke volumes to me was, of course, seeing Superman and the Flash outrun the Omega Beam and gouging out his eyes. And that was pretty much it. And the fact that, yes, when... Darkseid continued to fight without his eyes. I thought that was badass. The fact that he still didn't want to give up, even though he was getting into that, um, into the portal, was showing his tenaciousness that he does not want to lose. But that's where it ends to me. Like, there's other things that happen, but it, they weren't really as memorable as those moments. So, in execution, it was okay. I wouldn't say it was the greatest, but in execution of the battle between Darkseid and the Justice League, it was okay. The animation was good, don't get me wrong. But I think it was just... it. I, I think that Darkseid was mostly used to show how well the Justice League work as a team. Like, he, like we all know he's a big bad, but he was just used just to show how well the Justice League is, or, I mean, the Justice League are as a team, and that was it. And pretty much, it's just established the team. It was just, just there to establish the team. That's pretty much all he was used for. I could kind of agree with that. Uh, I guess why I'm just mostly focusing on the fight aspect of it, and I guess why I'm still familiar with these characters before this movie, I kind of give it a bit more credit, but I guess if this was your introduction to DC and included to these heroes, yeah, it's not a good introduction to these heroes. You could, because there are so many stories that do these characters much better. Right. Like, I'd even dare say the original Justice League live action movie was way better than uh, this movie. Even the Parademons looks way better. No, that movie sucked, and this movie sucks. So really, there was no better version of this movie. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> I feel like, Sean, if you can, have a suck uh, count of- wait, that sounds wrong. Uh, have uh, a Richard count of how many times he's complained about this movie. <laughs> don't ask, don't tell my editor what to do. But technically, he's my editor as well. Well, I mean, Hell he's he none is. of our editors. He's an independent woman. Man. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sean's an now, independent man. <laughs> hey, Sean, you want to... Hey, Sean, uh, do I do a better job of treating you good? I bet I do now. <laughs> well, you can add to the dumb counter. I was hoping I could have gotten through one podcast without adding to that. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> the day I get to 100 on my dumb counter, I will buy a Sunday for everyone. <laughs> How are you going to buy a Sunday for me when I'm miles away from you? Like, literally I'll, miles. I'll order you one from your store and send it to your address. <laughs> okay. Probably would melt by then. But, yeah, um, probably. So, Just like this movie. <laughs> So is that your final thoughts, guys, on this final fight? Yeah. Yes. Right then, so to end off this movie, the Justice League get thanked for saving the world, which surprisingly not that many casualties in that city, which baffled me. And like I said, and nothing of value was lost. Um, they Surprisingly, this is something I do think not a lot of superhero movies do these days. The heroes are congratulated, because a lot of the time... In this modern era, people just blame the superheroes. Like, listen, I get there's some stories where they do look at the realism of being a superhero and causing how much damage they do, but I still think people would thank a superhero team that stopped a demonic god from destroying it. Well, considering the fact that most of those people were kidnapped and then they were rescued, I would say they should give them some gratitude. Yeah, so it was kind of refreshing to actually see people thank them like even at the end of Incredibles like the, that movie people congratulate them then immediately started hating superheroes again whereas in this movie it's like no these guys fucking saved our planet cheer for them <laughs> like even the Avengers in their live action movie they got a bit of praise but they got more hate to the point that's when the Avengers disbanded <laughs> uh why couldn't we be talking about those movies instead <laughs> uh well sadly we're talking about DC People have talked about Marvel movies enough. We need to give DC more love. I agree. Fair enough. Um, but then, an end credit scene happens, typical, and it shows Ocean Master, which I remember being very shocked seeing, and it turns out he would be the next villain in... I don't think it was the next movie, but the movie after that movie, he would become the main yep. villain. Yeah, and it would, and spoiler alert, that movie would somehow manage to be slightly better than this, but it still sucked. I disagree with that, but we'll get to that another time, because I have a lot to say about the movie, and I think it's an underrated Aquaman movie, but, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Listen, we'll get to that eventually. Okay. So, they foreshadow Ocean Master being the main villain for our next movie, which is kind of cool, because I feel like Ocean Master is a great villain in a lot of stories he's adapted into. So I was on, I was honestly surprised by that. What about you two when you saw Ocean Master? I don't give a shit. Oh, it's like, like okay, so it's Ocean Master, so I guess Aquaman's gonna be in it. That was pretty much it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess I was the only one excited for that. <laughs> well, and that was Justice League War. So. I guess we should all give our initial thoughts in a nutshell. Um, Duo, do you want to go first? All right, my initial thoughts. Uh, when I first watched this movie, and this is usually spells doom if this movie is going to be good or not. Uh, first time I ever watched this movie was on Netflix. And after watching some of the other movies like Batman, uh, Under the Red Hood, um, Batman and Superman, Public Enemy, and many others. Um, the first few minutes of the of that of this movie, uh, Justice League War, I felt uninterested, and I just decided not to watch the rest of it at first. It took me a couple of years before, when I started collecting the DC animated movies, that I was interested. You know, let's give it another try. And you know, it, it, it there was a cup there were a couple of misses and there were some hits, but like I said, my first impression was it just didn't seem interesting to me at first. But then well, after watching it, it was okay. So um, overall, it, it was not the greatest movie ever made in the DC animated universe, but it was okay. Hmm. That's, that's fair enough. Um, Rich, do you want to give your final thoughts? Well, aside from the obvious way I've been acting towards this movie, I guess I'll go into a little more depth. Because I because Billy deserves it. Yeah. 
That's uh, a weird voice I made. Nah, it's cool. Uh, this this movie just this movie didn't need to exist. This whole universe didn't need to exist. Like this movie tried so hard to be like the new Fifty Two comic books, and just like those those books, it failed in the worst ways possible. It managed to just exaggerate them and show just how bad uh, they were and how really this whole universe was just nothing more than to make everybody like Batman. And therefore, this movie at least actually strays away from that. They actually make how Jordan a smartass. Well, he's always And that's pretty much it. Yeah, everyone else, you know, like Barry, I don't care about Barry. He's pretty much just... The fact that they even give... The fact that he even eats a fucking chimichanga. Like, oh, yeah, you get it? Because it's Deadpool. That's, <laughs> that's, not, that, that's not the reason. Like, it's... Burritos are a common thing from, like, fast food restaurants in America. Well, still. So, like, the whole Wonder Woman shtick, I did not like. She's terrible. She continues to be terrible. Superman, like you said, started off wrong. Yes, he gets better. Barely. But, eh. And everyone else, I just don't give a shit about. So, really, you know, in that sense, characters sucked. World sucked. Darkseid was pretty much just one big giant hype up machine and then he was just easily disposed of and he would come back later two more times and only the third time would he actually succeed at his fucking goal so you know there's that at least and just just this this animation sucks like i'm sorry like i know i know the person who did these models but and this would actually Later, go and this literally was just a slap in the face uh, reference to Young Justice because that's exactly where these models originated from. It's designer, so you know. Well, I mean, that's just the animator's style. It's, that's not exactly stealing models. If the actual animator for Young Justice also put his style into that, uh, no. What I mean by that is he literally just copy pasted. And the fact that they would stick with these models from the beginning to the end, it just shows how DC's animation style would go down the crapper. I disagree. So, that the yeah. animation is good. That's like, and that's what a lot of DC movies it's, have. It's serviceable, but it's nothing beyond that. Um, you know, in short, it's it, it it's it's like duos said. It's okay. But to me, it gets it, it just manages to go down a few points from being okay to mediocre because we would have to stick around in this universe for much longer and unfortunately this was the beginning of it. So, you know, if you like it, that's good. There's nothing wrong with it. If you're like Billy and you want to give it extra brownie points in some areas, that's fine. You know, I'll just pick on Billy for doing it. I won't pick on y'all for doing it. Yay! Um, <laughs> I'm the punching bag for but, this podcast. <laughs> agree. Eh, don't feel bad about it. <laughs> I don't uh, feel but, bad about yeah. anything. <laughs> but, yeah. I don't want to... I don't ever... Again, I'm so so glad that this, this universe is gone. But I hate being reminded that it existed. Yeesh. <laughs> Well, I guess I should give my initial thoughts on this movie. <laughs> yep. Huh? Oh, uh, did my audio cut out again? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, it did on my end. Okay, I thought I heard do a scream. What? I said, yep. So, my initial thoughts. Okay, so, because I'm a bit more optimistic than Richard, you know, I like to give people a fair chance, and I don't like to bash them for fun and views. <laughs> Who says I'm doing this for fun and views? This is not, this is legitimately what I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, sure. But anyway... <laughs> um, Shut up and give your thoughts. My first thought seeing this movie, the first time was kind of... When I saw this, I was like, I think 15 at the time, maybe 16. And 
movie was serviceable for someone of that age because I just enjoyed seeing superheroes wreck shit and fight. <laughs> but because I'm going into more story writing lately, especially because I'm working on a kid's book, um, which funny enough is to do with superheroes. <laughs> um, I, when I looked at this movie's story, I could see that many different writers wanted to tell a different story. Someone wanted to make a cyborg origin story. Someone wanted to make a story about Wonder Woman coming to America. Someone wanted to make a story about Batman and Green Lantern teaming up. And then someone wanted to do a story about the Justice League foreman. That, to me, is just showing, like, there must have been some, like, creative differences going on in the storyboards. To the point where Warner Bros. was just like, oh, fuck it, just do them all at once. <laughs> Uh, maybe that's not the case. Maybe they generally looked at this and said, you know what, this is pretty good. And if that's the case, then you know what, it, if you're proud of this story, guys, good on you. A writer should be proud of what they've done, even if many people might disagree with it, including me. Like, if you worked hours on something, if you worked years on something, or even months, and the recommend, the, the love or hate you got for it, it's really down to you whether you think it was not good or bad. The writers, I'm saying. Uh, but if you're, they're generally proud of this movie. Good on them. And I'm kind of glad that this movie did start like, fr increasing the quality a bit more after each movie. You know, Rich might disagree with that, but I generally enjoyed the animated DC universe. Can, can you guys hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Yes. Okay, my audio was going a bit weird on the OBS. I wasn't sure if you. I'm not sure if I said all that and it just went over your heads. <laughs> you did. Oh, I heard you. All right. So, and this movie, even though it's not that great compared to later movies, it did do somewhat of a good job showing like the quality of the animation and the future fights. Because even though Rich likes to bash it, I think the animation is really good, especially considering that these movies are very low budget. The reason they don't go to theaters or cinemas is because they have a very low budget they don't have a a large like amount of money to work on the animation a lot so they have to make do of what they've got but with what they do it's really good it's and it's enjoyable to watch but i wouldn't say i would watch the movie again just for those fights i'd probably just end up watching them on youtube Alright, the dark side right. final fight scene, I would rather just watch that on YouTube whenever I'm just... In their tongue, he is Dovahkiin. Dragonborn! So that's my final thoughts on the movie. Uh, it's not great, but to be honest, compared to other animated superhero movies with a similar budget, I would say it definitely opened the wave of better DC animated movies. And I look forward to talking about more of them in the future. Same here. Like, I'm, I'm looking know. forward to talk more about it, but... How about you, Rich? I guess I'm just looking forward to shitting on this universe and just explain why it was a big disaster and why uh, the, the, the direction we're going is a bright one. <laughs> Well, that was the that for people. That is the end of Justice League War. So the next movie we're going to talk about, Richard's excited for it. Duo, we are going to be talking about Batman versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Awesome! Awesome! <laughs> Even my dog's getting happy about. It. She's rolling around on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, people, we are good. I know people are going to say, well, that's not part of the cinematic universe. Well, listen, technically, no, it isn't. But at the same time, this was animated by the same people. Well, no, it was animated by, I don't know. Who, I don't, I wouldn't say okay, that. Some that of the good. animation team from the DC animated movies did work on this, including some of the story writers. Not and, really, but, you know, okay. Shut the fuck up, motherfucker! <laughs> Don't you tell me to shut up. <laughs> uh, yep, we're going to talk about Batman vs. the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And much like with Justice League War, our opinions are probably going to be nearly identical of what we think of this movie. Nearly. <laughs> so, uh, nearly. 
<laughs> it's probably going to be exactly similar because if you can't tell, we all love this movie. <laughs> yes. Yep. But uh, we'll save our thoughts on that on the full video. No initial release date yet because I'm working f uh, full time in retail. I rarely get any time to play video games now for my channel, which sucks. Um, but if you all enjoyed this video, be sure to share the video around, get the channel growing, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye, everybody. Well, first these guys will do their outros. Is this is like my thing. May my rain last for an eternity. And this is Do Dreamer, and always dream big. I don't have a funny one-liner to end this podcast off, so. Arrivederci. Yeah.